Hi guys, Matt Easton here. Um, a mini rant that I'm going to have, and that is about the development of um, the equipment in sport fencing that moves it further and further and further away from the original point of sport fencing, and that was the uh, sport based on the use of a sword. Okay, Now I completely understand sport fencing is a modern sport, um, and it will evolve, the, the rules get changed every now and again, the, the, the scoring equipment, the electrical scoring equipment was supposedly to introduce less controversy and less uh, subjective judging and make everything scientific. Um, but I actually think that all of these things in sport fencing, uh, all of the equipment changes and rule changes and other things that have happened more or less in the last kind of 80-90 years, uh, and, and actually the big changes really have been kind of since the 1940s and 50s, um, have essentially degraded the sport and made it less attractive to the sort of people who are probably going to want to do fencing. Now this connects to my fundamental belief that the majority of people who start fencing, and I'm not going to say the majority of people who stick with fencing or who maybe go to Olympic level or, or uh, you know, national level of, of sport fencing, but the majority of people who start fencing classes and first go to a fencing class fundamentally want to learn to sword fight. Okay, so I have uh, noticed in recent years with the growth of, of HEMA and other sword-based martial arts that it seems to me like local fencing clubs I know of have got less attendees uh, or certainly relatively less attendees, whilst the HEMA clubs, the real, the real swordsmanship clubs, are growing at a rate of knots, growing really, really quickly. Um, and in HEMA I have met a lot of people who have backgrounds in sport fencing. I have a background in sport fencing myself, not to any uh, great competitive level, I only did it recreationally at school and university, and for a short time after university I've done uh, foil at school, sports saver at university, and then EPE after that. Um, and um, I, I, was, um, I never had the benefits of a fantastic teacher. I had a pretty good teacher at school in foil. I learned some good foil basics. But after that, at university, we didn't have a decent teacher, unfortunately. And we were more or less left to just get on with it and fence. Which, in, for me, was probably a good thing, because it meant I could just kind of experiment with stuff that interested me, rather than necessarily learning how to win points under their rule system. Because... I wouldn't particularly learn, like to learn how to do that under Sport Saber, which is what I was doing at uh, university, because um, it, under Sport Saber rules, uh, there's all sorts of strange ways you can get around the rules to win points, um, such as starting your action and charging in, um, because there's a, there's a right of way rule. Uh, and because you've started your action, you can pretty much ignore what the opponent does because their hit won't count so long as you conclude your action with a successful hit. Um, and indeed, as we all know, a sword has an edge or two edges which cut, but in sports saber fencing, you can hit them with any part of the blade um, and it makes an electrical contact and it, and it doesn't really matter how hard you hit them either. It could just be a little a stroke with the flat and you still score a point. So it's, it's very stupid and uh, I'm not a big fan of it. And I have noticed in HEMA that whilst there are a lot of people like me who have sport fencing backgrounds, there's a lot of people who've left sport fencing and uh, started HEMA because they went into it wanting to learn sword fighting. And all of the introductions of new equipment and new rules and strange ways of getting around the rules over the years that have happened in sport fencing, all they've done is drive away the people who actually want to learn how to use a sword. Because what they've ended up doing is creating a completely abstract sport where actually, although many of the fundamentals, and I'm actually an exponent of uh, encouraging people to learn sport fencing, especially as children, as a precursor to learning HEMA, to learn real swordsmanship. However, what they've succeeded in doing is driving away a lot of people who want to learn to do sword fighting and driving them into the arms of historical fencing and, and, and HEMA. Um, now, the one specific thing I wanted to talk about as an illustration of, of this point is that if we look at here we have a 19th century foil and you'll see that the handle is almost dead straight. Okay? Um, it has a very slight curve to it, which, di which uh, gives you the orientation of the sword and how it's to be held. Okay? Um, and it, it kind of curves very, very slightly into your grip to, to enable a slightly more um, comfortable grip on the sword. 
um, and the finger and thumb which you primarily grip with uh, are very, are very. Uh, it makes it more comfortable to steer, steer the blade essentially, and be more uh, subtle with your finger actions on the blade and such like. Okay, so that's the early, that's the early foil. Um, then what we've got here is I have a later. This is probably kind of 1920s or 30s, I believe. Um, uh, epe, okay, and here's what the epe used to look like in the in the maybe it's as late as Second World War, but it's this kind of year. It's kind of between the First World War and the Second World War, and again the the handle is very slightly curved to fit into your grip, okay. Now I should mention I'm not a huge fan of that because the uh, the grips on real swords aren't curved, so why would you have a curved grip on your practice sword? But you know it's not too curved, and you know I I can kind of live with that. Then what we have here is a circa 2005 um, Epe, and you'll notice that the Epe now the guard has got absolutely massive, um, and the grip is really quite curved. Now you might think, oh, that's really weird. Uh, those of you who know about swords or interest in swordsmanship, but don't necessarily know about sport fencing, you might think that's really weird that the grip is that curved. This ain't anything, okay? Look up on Google uh, orthopedic or pistol grips for epes or indeed foils. Um, they are, and I don't own one, and I don't wish to own one, so I can't show you one directly, um, uh, they are utterly designed so you grip them like a pistol grip. Okay. Now, in itself, you would think, well, I don't really, you know, I don't have a problem with that. It's a modern sport, modern equipment, modern scoring. It's just beca become a game of electrified tag, essentially. Um, where the person with the quickest combination of, um, uh, of athleticism and reaction time and, and a little bit of technique thrown in uh, scores the first hit 0.3 of a second before the other person, uh, which in swordsmanship, of course, would be both people dead. Um, but um, you, you might think that, and that's fine. However, I strongly believe that things like this, this development, uh, further and further away from the original swords that these were supposed to be practice weapons for have only gone to weaken sport fencing and to an extent help create the historical fencing slash HEMA movement. Okay? Um, now for HEMA, historical fencing, that's a good thing. However, a part of me thinks it's really sad that at some point in history um, there was a division where fencing went off in one completely abstract direction even though lots of people who are doing fencing started it because they want to learn how to fight with the sword and true swordsmanship had to actually go back into history, delve back into history and pull out those sources that actually talk about the use of real swords in real, real uh, combat um, and kind of recreate things. And I think it's a real shame because sport fencing does have a lot of fantastic things about it. It's got fantastically high level of uh, athleticism, it's got some amazing teaching methods and drills and ways of making sure that people can really reach their fullest potential uh, in, in the art, in, in a martial art. Um, and it's got some really good, I mean, I'll, I'll be honest, I and lots of other people in the HEMA copy uh, sport fencing training methodologies and apply them to the weapons that we teach because that makes sense. Um, but you've got these, you know, you've got some fantastic teachers, you've got good established clubs which in some cases have uh, lineages going back to the 19th century and beyond in, in some cases. Um, and, and yet they essentially turned their back on where they came from uh, and completely ignore it. Uh, to, the, to the point that many sport fencing um, organisations and practitioners now kind of poo-poo historical fencing and think it's, you know, playing around and not real fencing. When in actual fact it is the real fencing. And sport fencing, I would argue, doesn't any longer deserve to have the title of fencing because it's no longer fencing. It is electrified tag and that is not fencing. Okay, so for me, I feel a little bit um, spiteful that historical fencing has to call itself historical fencing or HEMA because in actual fact what historical fencing is is fencing what sport fencing is is something else entirely and it's a real shame I think that it's gone so far away from what I think the majority of people actually want it to be and that is swordsmanship thank you